Well, it's so lovely to be in this room, and it's really, um, I'm delighted to have been invited to see so many familiar faces, um, some new faces and some old faces from the past. So um, thank you very much for inviting me. So I guess I've been invited to perhaps give a bit of a practitioner's perspective, someone who's out there hopefully kind of leading the way in how we're um, shaping our city um, to be responding to the challenges that are facing us. So um, just to be very clear, this is my, uh, my stance on climate change. Unless we take action, future generations will be roasted, toasted, fried and grilled. So, be, so I absolutely, um, I'm absolutely adamant that we need to do something about it. So be, no, be under no illusion of my uh, perspective. Um, and then in terms of my perspective, I think it's um, going to talk to you a little bit about the work that we are doing within Panuku, specifically at Winyard Quarter. Um, and then I'm going to share with you some of, some of my ideas for, I think, my ideas for how we need to shape Auckland. Um, so Iki Panuki, Iki Tangaroa. So uh, much like the Walker, we're in the Walker together going forward trying to really transform Auckland. And so Panuku Development Auckland was set up in um, September last year, so we're a year old now. Um, it was a merger for, between Waterfront Auckland and Auckland Council Property Limited, a real desire by the council to try and sprinkle the magic that we've delivered at Winyard Quarter. So it's a wonderful... Um, honour to be part of that organisation and a huge challenge to kind of move out into the rest of Auckland um, and try and help shape those places. So we've got a vision for shaping spaces for Aucklanders to love. Um, and how we do it, we have um, a different approach. What's kind of really key, and I think this theme will come through my speech and it's come through others, is the whole idea of collaboration. We can't deliver these things alone, so how do we do that? Um, so at Panuka, we've been given a really strong mandate to do that, um, to, take, to become a lead agency, to focus on delivery and really um, start making some change happen. So um, obviously one of our, our, our star project is uh, the Winyard Quarter, hopefully many of you are familiar with that. It's been absolutely um, a pleasure to be able to be involved in that project and to see that project evolve, come out of the ground and become a place that Aucklanders really love to be part of. So I think um, I want to talk a little bit about, I guess, the evolution of the work we've been doing. So I think the organisation very much made a stance when it first started that um, only dead fish go with the flow. So we could have done what everybody had always done, um, but we wouldn't have got what we've got. So I guess um, in thinking about how urban development would normally be delivered, um, you have a piece of land, you do the minimum you need to do to get it to the market, you market it, um, you sell it to the highest bidder, and you maximise your profit. So that would be the traditional um, urban development, not for some of our other development partners here tonight, so it's great to have Ockham in the room who have a different philosophy um, than that. But I think our approach at Winyard Quarter was um, we were far more clear in what we actually wanted to achieve for that, um, that part of Auckland. So we had a whole lot of key ingredients that have really helped us kind of deliver what we have. And we got a mandate from Aucklanders. Aucklanders told us that we needed to be showing leadership around sustainability. We went out and, and, and consulted on a waterfront plan. They asked us to put that in there, so the blue-green waterfront was a really key part. So that mandate was really important. Really committed leadership, really strong board, really strong um, leadership team. Um, within uh, um, Waterfront Auckland and now Panuku. We were clear, really clear on where we wanted. We went out to the market with a, a set of standards. We went out with a set of sustainability standards, design standards. We said what we wanted in terms of community infrastructure um, to develop over time. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask what you want. Um, we embedded those requirements in development agreements so they can't get out of not doing what we want them to do. Um, we have integrated designs, so we're there the whole way. This is a real partnership between us um, and the private sector and the work that we're doing down there. Um, we have independent reviews, so we have our work scrutinised, um, we're really transparent about our performance, etc. Um, and I think just want to show you some of the examples of our success down there. So this is um, um, just gone live. So we have done the modelling for all our seven new buildings that are under construction in Winyard Quarter at the moment. And um, compared to business as usual buildings, we are um, saving 4.6 gigawatts of electricity per year because we've set those really high standards. We'll work with those building owners and we're getting some fantastic buildings coming out. <coughs> and I had the pleasure to be at the opening of the Waterfront Theatre this morning and that's going to be the first um, five Green Star rated, hopefully, when it gets its rating, um, theatre in New Zealand. And the other thing that I'm exceptionally proud of announcing, is we, we only found out about this yesterday, but the Winyard Quarter Redevelopment has made it to the finals of the C40 um, uh, awards, so we're a finalist in the sustainable communities category, and that's a huge achievement, achievement and in recognition of the work that we're doing around kind of uh, leading the <laughs> climate change. So I'm really, really proud of that. And so I guess you know, um, selected finalists have demonstrated bold leadership in implementing projects. So just to go to show Auckland can do it, and we can do it really, really well. And we just need to do more of it. So some of my ideas on how to um, shape Auckland. So we need to think like a system. 
Now, these, this is old thinking. It's not new thinking at all, but I don't think we often think like a system. And um, so we are looking to use systems thinking for a lot of the work we're now doing within Panuku. We can't do things alone. We're operating communities where there's lots of existing networks in place. Um, so we need to start thinking like a system. And so there's two projects we're about to kick off. Um, the Puanui Stream uh, Restoration Project in Manukau as part of our Manukau project. And we want to pull together all the people that are going to be part of making that project successful. Um, so we need to start thinking like a system. Um, Co-everything. We use the word collaboration so incredibly loosely and freely, but you know I don't think we genuinely know what it means yet to do it incredibly well, and I think it's something that remains one of our greatest challenges to move beyond the rhetoric. Um, and this is a great example of something that I think we should aspire to in Auckland, and I know this is something that um, Mealy and Brown is really interested in as well. So this is a, a city studio that's been set up by the city of Vancouver. It's a real true collaboration between business, technology, um, city hall, the citizens, and staff within the council. So you've got, they've got this kind of hub that sits within um, City Hall where they all work collectively on challenges and they all um, you know, come up with ideas and implement them together and I just think that kind of idea is something that I'd really like to see um, in Auckland. Uh, continuous improvement. I think we really need to look to some of these um, some of the systems that are used within industry and business. Continuous improvement, also not a new idea, but I think so often we do something and we kind of forget that we need to keep doing the next thing. We kind of rest on our laurels a little bit. So I think continuous improvement's um, really important. So, you know, we really have to kind of keep moving on as well, and we can't think we've ever sold something just because we've uh, built, a, a, unfortunately, a new road or even a new rail link. We're going to have to keep doing things. We're going to have to keep changing, keep reviewing, and can kind of keep moving forward. Um, so innovation, and um, I think innovation and sustainability are inextricably linked. And I just think for Auckland to um, move forward, we need to look to the innovation technology sector, look at some of the way they do things, look at the whole fast-fail as a really interesting concept, not something that governments normally like to kind of think about, but you know, let's just give them things a go. We don't have to know all the answers to get started. Let's get started. If we know it's not working, let's stop and do something else. And I think we need to kind of have a culture of, of being able to do that, and I think we can learn an awful lot um, from the innovation sector around that. And then um, globalisation. So the idea that you know we have to, we realise we're in a global context, and we've heard about the global context, but we really have to kind of make things about local and come up with local solutions and really work locally. Um, this is one of the projects that I'm really proud to have been uh, involved in. It's kind of our a mini example of our city studio, and we're just about to the challenge wraps up in a couple of weeks. But this is where we've gone to AUT and MIT students in Monaco. We've presented two challenges to them. We've asked those students to um, to devise some solutions and we're providing them support. Um, so, so we're hoping they'll come up with solutions for their communities and then we can make the commitment to help implement what they come up with. So my kind of four big ideas, think like a system, co everything, continuous improvement, globalisation. And then I think just as I, you know, what, what, what this can deliver for us, this was Jellicoe Street um, 2009 down at Winyard Quarter, still an, an active port, and that's what it looks like today. So I think we can really make change and we can do it quite quickly and do some really special things for Aucklanders, and I think they really deserve it. So looking forward to um, talking more. Thank you. Thanks.